brother in the last session which was on web application basics you have learned what a web application is and how it serves the incoming http requests and sends the http response back to the browser you have also learned the typical folder structure of a j2w web application before i do the web application hands on i'll be presenting some topics on uh, java servlets and java server pages starting with servlet basics today by the end of this presentation you should know what a servlet class is the various classes and interfaces that make up the servlet api and also the life cycle of a servlet class a servlet is a java class that runs within a servlet container like apache tomcat or jboss or websphere and weblogic and these web these servlet containers know when to invoke a particular servlet depending on the request the http request that comes in and they also know how to the how to invoke the different methods within a servlet class let's say you are working on a banking application which allows users to log in and uh, do all the banking transactions online so on the login screen when the user submits his username and password and hits the submit button the incoming requests can be handled by a servlet class that you come up with and this servlet class can retrieve the user id and password from within the http request and invoke the database data access layer classes or the business logic layer classes to validate the user information and once validated if the information is correct this servlet can redirect the user to your home screen or the home page wherein he can access his account information or if the details provided if the authentication fails you can always your servlet can redirect him to the error screen in the initial j2w days servlets were the core components of all the web application uh, or for most of the applications you have to write so many uh, servlet classes to come up with a j2w web application but as the j2w web applications evolved and the uh, design patterns like model view controller came into existence servlet classes became more of controller classes and the view or the actual presentation logic moved into java server pages and the actual core business logic moved out of the servlet into model classes which in turn call into the business logic classes which in turn call into the data access layer classes but before that it was, the servlet classes used to be cluttered with everything like the the presentation logic the business logic the database initialization everything was within a servlet class moving on the servlet api is uh, made up of several classes and interfaces which fall into two packages the javax servlet and the javax servlet http the main interface here is the servlet interface which is implemented by generic servlet class you can implement a generic servlet class and you can come up with a servlet that's not http that does, that can handle any any requests not just the http requests but in most cases since we are developing web applications we implement http servlet class which is in the javax servlet http package and the http servlet class in turn implements the generic servlet and these interfaces and classes some of them are implemented by us as developers and some of them are provided implemented and provided for us at run time by the servlet containers like apache tomcat or weblogic or sphere the servlet life cycle unlike the j2 java desktop applications for which the starting point of execution is the main method in case of a servlet the starting point of execution is the init method and a servlet container knows how to invoke the various methods within a servlet so every servlet that you come up with will implement the either the generic servlet class or the http servlet class and it will override these methods here the init method the service method and the destroy method in this order so the init method is where you can initialize your servlet let's say uh, you are connecting to the database or you are reading a config you are loading a configuration file 
for example in, in the struts when you work on a struts application the action control controller servlet loads the struts config file within the in, init method and if the init method doesn't complete properly if it can't for example if it can't load the struts config file or if it can't connect to the database it, it should throw a servlet exception the service method is the core of any servlet class and all the logic goes in here and as you can see these methods the servlet container provides these methods with objects like servlet config which has all the information in the web.xml the deployment descriptor so you can you can read the information that you provide in the web.xml from within the servlet config when I do the hands-on, I'll show you what exactly I mean by that. Moving on to the service method, it has two parameters, the HTTP servlet request and the HTTP servlet response. Using the HTTP servlet request method, you, uh, request, um, HTTP servlet request object, you can retrieve all the HTTP uh, request parameters. Like if you go back to the banking application, you can retrieve the username and password by, by saying request.get parameter username request or get parameter password and using the http response class you can write back once you once you validate the incoming username and password you can write the response back to the browser using the methods on the http response class and the service method as you can see throws a servlet exception or io exception if you can't write the response back to the browser and at the end of it we have the destroy method which does the opposite of what init did so if we, if we have created a database connection within the init method we should clean that here if we have opened a file io connection we should close that here in case of http servlets the service method changes to a do get do post or other or hand to handle other http methods i'll be presenting the various HTTP methods and also the do get and do post methods in my next presentation. So to summarize the life cycle of a servlet, when a HTTP request comes in, by taking the login example again, the servlet container like Tomcat loads your servlet class, let's say the login servlet class into memory. It calls the init method, which um, initializes the database connections or any configuration information that you want to use within your servlet class then it invokes the service method providing it with a HTTP servlet request which has all the information that comes in the incoming request so the servlet container you reads the HTTP request that comes in builds this class for you and then handles handle hands it over to your service method then you can play around with the incoming parameters and at the end of the service method, you use the response class to write the response back to the browser. This could be HTML, plain text, or it could be a file that you can write back to the browser. And at the end, in the test drive method, you, you do the opposite to what the init did. You close the database connections and also close the IO, IO file streams if you have opened any. So to summarize, now you know what a servlet class is. It, a servlet class is a Java class that runs within a servlet container and the containers like Tomcat knows how, when, how and when to call these servlet classes and the various methods within them. And the core packages of a servlet API are the javax.servlet and the javax.servlet.http. And the two classes you will be implementing uh, you can implement our generic servlet and the HTTP servlet, but in most cases we will implement HTTP servlet to handle our HTTP requests. And the lifecycle methods are of a servlet are init, service, and destroy. In case of a HTTP servlet, instead of service method, we'll have do get, do post to handle the HTTP methods. In the next presentation. I'll be uh, presenting advanced servlet topics like the various HTTP methods, how to handle a session state, and also how these web resources like servlets and JSPs can share information with each other. And then we'll be moving on to JSPs in the future presentation. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.